You got their order right, Jordan, wherever you went. Love God, please God, serve God. Matthew twenty two thirty seven. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. Other passages will say might or strength. But the idea is this, that my heart for the teens and their heart and my heart for you, my heart for myself, is that I will love God more than anything else in the world. And that love will be evident in my life, that it won't just be a lip service. We can easily say, I love God. We know the right words to say. We come to church. You're here on a Sunday night, right? You obviously know what to say. You know when church is open. But, but so often in our life, the love for God is just merely lip service. Yes, we want the teens to have love for God, and we tell them, listen, you know, young people, you got to love God, you got to love God. We, we say, church, you got to love God. But the question is, do I love God like I'm supposed to love God? Do you love God like you're supposed to love God? Like Jesus said, love him, love God with all of yourself. With every fiber in your being, may that be your love, may that echo your love for God. You see, the love for God authenticates my relationship with God. The love for God begins with God. We love him because he first loved us. The love for God is emulated from God because the Bible says God is love. So I can't love God without God's love for me. And, and loving God is merely the starting point, but I'm afraid at times that that starting point, it, we've missed the mark. We do things for God, but we don't love God. We show up, we're supposed to show up, we, we uh, do the actions we're supposed to do, but what is supposed to drive all the, uh, everything in life is my love for God and God's love for me. That's why love God is first. Because if you don't love God, if, if I don't love God, there is no way to please God. No way. If God didn't love me and offer Jesus, then it's impossible. There'd be no faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. You see, if I don't serve out of love for God, right, then I'm not pleasing God. John 8, 29, Jesus says this, For I do always those things, speaking of the Father, that please him. You see, if I love God, that love should drive me to please God. When I spoke about love, and teens remember this, I spoke about my stupid dog at home, Max. It's actually not my dog, it's my wife's stupid dog. Three and a half pound rat, dust mop, and a football. About this big. This dog tolerates me, and I tolerate it. We have a love hate relationship. Those of you who know, we talk about this teens, right? This dog does this stupid little thing. When my wife leaves, we all leave. The, the dog runs to the den and jumps on top of the couch and looks out the windows that look out over the driveway and watches for my wife's vehicle to come back home. Now, I sometimes during the day from working here will walk back into the house and, and the dog will not come, but after 20 minutes or so that I'm home or something, he'll come pattering in there to look at me as if to say, why are you here and what are you doing here? But when my wife's car pulls in the driveway, that dumb dog runs to the back door and stares at the bottom of the door. He can only see the white panel. It's this tall. Sees this white panel and waits for that door to crack open. And when that door cracks open, it takes out like a rocket out there to run to the person that it loves. That's my wife. And it jumps around all giddy and laugh. It looks at me like I'm an idiot. It looks like Doreen, like, oh, wow, I'm so glad to see you. Where have you been my whole life? She's like, I just went out to the laundry room. I just came back inside. It's been 35 seconds. Yet I wonder, if anyone were to watch our life, if they would see that kind of love for God in our life. If anyone would see us standing at the doorway where God was going to walk through, and all we can see is this white panel and say, if it just cracks open, I'm going to run to my God and my Savior. I'm afraid we often just sit here in the pew, sit at home, ride in our car, and we know what to say about love for God, but it's not there. But that love drives me to please my God. So that out of that love flows natural choices that please the Lord. You see, the difference in serving God, pleasing God, is day-to-day -day things, where I wake up in the morning and I want to please God. I wake up in the morning, and I, and I see my family, and I want to please God. I go to work, and I want to please him. I want to make choices. Like Jesus said, I want to do always those things that please him. To say, God, what do you have for me today? Lord, what route do you want me to take to work? Lord, what gas station should I stop at? Because there may be somebody pumping gas that I can minister to. 
Lord, at my job today, help me to do a good job to please you. Lord, help me to be a good witness at, at my work today. Lord, help me to have a good spirit. Lord, help me not to, to say something that would bring shame on your name. I want to do those things that please him. I talked about this, the message I preached uh, on the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. I'll probably preach it here sometime, but I'll share one part of it, the idea that too often with the pride of life, we think the world revolves around me. The guy in front of me needs to go faster because I am in a hurry. And the stupid lady needs to have her money out of the checkout counter because I need to check out right now. I can have a bad attitude because you offended me. We begin to look at the life through the lens of God's word. We say it's not about me, it's about him. When I look through the lens of God's word, I see it's not about me, but it's about other people. And let each esteem other better than themselves. So when I love God, I see I love what God loves, and that's other people. When I love God, I love the things that God loves. That means God's church. Tell you what, listen to Brother Edward speak. He said, you know, my wife and I made two commitments. One was to be faithful to each other. The other one was to be faithful to church. He talked about the times that he would go to a different place, and before he got the transfer, that his bosses would say to him, Brother, Mr. Edwards, would you, would you want this transfer? And, and we know what you're going to do. You're going to want to go there first and see if you can find a good church. He'd go there, and if he found a good church, he'd transfer, and if not, he wouldn't go. You see a man whose life, and he would be embarrassed, I don't even talk about this, I know he does not like it, but I'm, I am continually challenged by his choices because he's a man who's trying to please the Lord who makes the things of God and God a priority in life, not just an idea. Where it's actually real, where actually, you know what? I'm not going to go here. I'm not going to take this transfer because I can't please the Lord right here. But I've seen a lot of people go to another place because the job was good. Pastor Howell, I got this opportunity, and it's a great pay raise. I'll ask them, hey, is there a church there? And they'll say this, I can find a good church there. There's lots of churches down there. There's lots of churches down here. There's lots of churches over there. And, and then it's just a few months later, I'll see him again. I'll say, hey, how's it going? It's going great. Job's going well. Yes, yeah, did you find a good church? Well, you know, and then they use this phrase. Well, there's no place like First Baptist. Like somehow we're supposed to say, oh, well, you're right, so don't bother going to church. Don't bother obeying the Lord. Don't bother obeying the Bible. Don't bother being committed. Yeah, there's no place like First Baptist. We got a lot of problems here. All right, I'm here. But you know what? There's no place like serving Jesus. When I love God like I should, I'll please God. Last one is serve him, Romans 12, 2. To you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You see, once I love God like I ought to, then I strive to please God like I should, and then I offer myself to God as I please him. Say, God, would you use me? Lord, would you use whatever talents I have? Maybe there's just a few talents, Lord, but I'll sing in the choir with my few talents. Lord, I can drive a vehicle, and every, every single week someone's asking for a bus driver. Lord, I can drive, uh, but I'm afraid to drive a bus. But my life's not my own. I'm a living sacrifice. Uh, Lord, I'll teach the Sunday school class even though I'm afraid to get in front of little kids or in front of adults, because my life's not my own, I'm a living sacrifice. Lord, I'll let my kids go wherever you want them to go to college, even though it's thousands of miles away, because my life's not my own, I'm a living sacrifice, and things you give me are sacrificial for you, Lord. Lord, I'll let them do that. I remember one time when a teen thought they should go off to college to California. Parents said, no, that's too far. Kid didn't go. I'd like to say now the child's doing well, but they're not. And they, everyone makes their own choices, but I put a large amount of responsibility on those parents hindering the child from what, they're, what, what they thought they were supposed to do. And listen, parents, your kids are going to have had a hard time getting this idea if you don't have it. If they don't see you sacrificing, if my kids don't see me sacrificing, then you know what? They're probably not going to sacrifice. But I want my kids to see me being a living sacrifice. All right, to say, God, whatever you want from me. All right, Lord, it may make me afraid. 
Lord, it may, may not be comfortable for me. Lord, it may not be what I would choose. But Lord, it's not me. It's about you. And Lord, this body is not, it's not mine. It's yours. Lord, these talents, whatever they may be, whether you give me one talent, five talents, or ten talents, it's not yours. It's his, right? So let's use it for him. Let's use it. One of the problems in a big church like this. So we look around and we say, someone else can. Someone else will. I hope someone else does. What if we're just going to serve God and say, God, I'll do it. I'll do it. Remember Mr. Swain talking about his first time he was principal. He had been saved just a few months. And he'll to this day, when he tells you this testimony, he'll say, I was not supposed to be the principal of that Christian school. He said, no, God called me and obeyed the Lord. I wasn't supposed to be. He said, someone else who grew up in a Christian home with Christian parents, the godly parents are supposed to be the principal, and they said no. He said, and God called me, and I said yes. He'll tell you that story. And I'd like to challenge these teens. I said, if we don't serve God, who's going to serve God? If we as a church don't send out laborers for Jesus Christ, who's going to? Bridgeport High School, Saginaw High? I hope there's some that serve God, but, but we have the truth. We have the Bible. We have, we have a lot of things right here. We've got to make sure we serve God. I mean, I heard these teens and been praying for you guys. Prayed for you all week by name. I'm excited for what God did in your heart and life. And I pray that those things that you talked about tonight and Thursday will not just be a Thursday night or last week, but we'll see it tomorrow at school. We'll see it on Sunday. And I hope these people out here, when you get to go to camp, get to see what God did in your heart and life. In church, you're loving God. You're pleasing God. You're serving God. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. And I, want them, I don't want them to lead the charge. All right. They, they, but if you won't, I hope they do. I'll tell them to. But I hope you jump in there and say, you know what? You teenagers, you can follow me as I follow Christ. Son, you can follow dad as he follows. Daughter, you can follow mom. Grandson, you can follow grandpa. Sister, you can follow brother. And brother, sister. Lord, I thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you for your love for us. Lord, I ask that you would touch us. Lord, it's so easy to get cold. It's so easy to get calloused. Lord, I don't want us to. Lord, I don't want this church to grow cold. But Lord, I want us to love you with all our heart and soul and mind. Lord, may we please you. Lord, may we serve you. Lord, help us to be honest now. Lord, help us to deal with you. You deal with us. Lord, touch us. In just a moment, the piano will play. The altar will be open. As soon as those first notes come out of that piano, if God has dealt with you, why don't you find your, find your way to the altar? Maybe you need to say, I need to love God. Maybe please Him or serve God. Would you do business with God? As soon as the piano begins to play, then make your way to the altar or stand on our feet with